Joining us now is our international affairs commentator, Doug Herbert. Doug, of course, we're talking about this because we're seeing these horrifying images coming out of Bucha. But are there indications that this has been going on all along? The entire vast swathes of Ukraine and Ukrainian territory are essentially uh, potential war crime scenes. Uh, look, since the beginning of this war, what has the pattern been? A grisly, gruesome pattern of the intentional targeting of civilians and civilian infrastructure, which is a euphemism for schools and hospitals and ambulances, uh, places where they're sheltering. In Mariupol alone, we saw a maternity war, ward bombed. We saw a, a theater where uh, hundreds of civilians were sheltering, uh, bombed despite children being ridden. In on the uh, on the grounds in the parking lot in very big letters so you could see it from the air. Uh, we've seen a siege tactics, the starvation of populations by cutting them off from essential food and medicine supplies. Uh, look, in the Kiev region alone, we see these horrific images, and you can't understate how horrifying and shocking they are. But, you know, over 400 bodies uh, were recovered in the Kiev region alone, according to Ukraine's prosecutor general. There have also been mass graves uh, discovered, reports of mass graves. Uh, we've had Human Rights Watch documenting, chronicling, well before Bucha, uh, in March, after, you know, in the month after the invasion, uh, incidents of a woman being repeatedly raped by forces. Uh, we have had summary uh, accounts of summary executions of civilians, violent acts against civilian populations, both civilians uh, and who are non-combatants and also combatants, obviously, all violating what are called the laws of war. Um, it's incumbent on, on those who are accused of such crimes of undertaking investigations of their own actions. Um, and it's a big question whether or not Russia is going to do that. But by all means, this is not something that's just happened overnight. This is an ongoing and grisly pattern that we've been seeing of atrocities. Well, the Russians are saying this is fake news. We know that's not true because of what we can see with our very own eyes. Why make statements like this? Yeah, I mean, I'll underscore that what I was just talking about, not my words. These are victims on the ground, eyewitnesses, local residents, verified video images, uh, videos and images posted to to, uh, to the Internet, social media. Look, what you see on the screen there, that is a, uh, a screenshot uh, from the Pyrvi Canal, the first channel, the state-controlled first channel, and their news this morning which I watched, their top two headlines were one about the so-called uh, Ukrainian radical provocations in the Bucha region. So basically all of this, none of this, according to the official and the only permissible line in narrative in the Russian state media this morning, none of this is down to Russian forces. It is all the work of Ukrainian radicals. And what are they doing? This is staged. This is fake. This is all orchestrated. Literally, we are to believe that these bodies are staged, laid, laid in the road, uh, laying down there, strewn across the street in order to whip up, whip up sympathy for Ukraine and, and, and fear against Russia in the international community. It's a continuation of the same narrative we've seen from Russia and its state-controlled media all along, that Russia's the victim here, that anyone who accuses Russia of atrocities or wrongdoing is basically absolutely a victim of their own propaganda. We are all lying. Western propaganda is lying. Uh, and that's the line. The second headline on that state news, I might note, was about the heroism uh, and the valor of the Russian troops as they peacefully uh, redeploy to other parts of Ukraine. How effective is that? Uh, it's extremely effective with the Russian population, as we've been noting. The vast majority of Russians, especially the old generation, still get their news from Russian state-controlled uh, state media. But, but even beyond that, when you challenge people with, with facts and evidence that, that suggests and show them the contrary to what their propaganda is telling them, so much of them sometimes, psychologically, their whole identities are tied up in a lifetime of, of buying and reading into this and, and believing this propaganda, uh, that denial is a part of their being. If they're to drop their denial, they're, in a sense, dropping part of their identity. It's extremely hard to do. So it's not just a matter of presenting facts. It's a real hardwired psychological factor in the Russian population's embrace of their propaganda. Let's talk about war crimes. Uh, it's one thing to investigate them. How hard are they to prosecute? Very difficult, extremely difficult, especially as a former war crimes pro prosecutor, Carlo Del Ponte, actually said, called for issuing an international arrest warrant for Vladimir Putin. Let me show you here. No easy task, I said, because there are two courts, basically, here. You could bring cases to the International Criminal Court. The problem is it has no police force. It has no enforcement powers. And Russia itself doesn't recognize it. Russia pulled out of the International Criminal Court in 2016. So hard to see Russia uh, acquiescing to any decision by the ICC or any 
any uh, any uh, uh, actions taken to try to enforce a ruling. The International Court of Justice, the second one there, uh, looks good as well, right? Why not bring heads of state before the International Court of Justice? The problem there uh, is that it, it requires a green light from the UN Security Council. What's the problem there, Monty? I probably don't have to tell you. One of the five permanent members of the Security Council, the vote, the veto-wielding member, is Russia. Mm -hmm. So Russia right there, that is a giant, giant uh, obstacle there. So neither of these courts, while they have it uh, within them to be able to prosecute, are going to be able to perhaps successfully do so. Uh, we've seen it in the past with Rwanda. We've seen it with the breakup of Yugoslavia. Uh, prosecuting Russia for war crimes or potential war crimes in Ukraine is going to be a far heavier lift for the international community and its courts.